Welcome, everyone. Glad you made it back to week two. We're excited to uh, have uh, Kevin Hall once again leading us, and we're going to be talking about humility. I hope everybody received the study guide, which will help uh, as far as taking notes. Got some feedback from, from everyone that said that uh, some note taking would be helpful, and got a few uh, new tools to share towards the end of the meeting. Uh, got some great feedback. So I've got five or six tools I'd love to share with, with everybody. So without further ado, Kevin, if you would please take it away. And Norm, I'm excited. I am so excited. By the way, the weather here is gorgeous. It's going to be about 80 degrees today where I'm at. Don't feel bad if I say that. Comparison's the thief of all joy. But today, we're going to talk about the mother of all virtues. And you were sent about an hour before this call. That's what I love about working with Norm is that Norm is always growing. There's another way to do it. There's a way to do it a little bit better. And so we created a very powerful guidebook, a 20 page guidebook that you can print out. You can recap what we did last week, what we do this week. It'll take us through this eight week series. And so that is in your inbox. So check that. We're going to go this morning, right now, we're going to move forward. It's a 20-page guidebook. There's some beautiful visualization pages to visualize abundance. We're in page six, and we're going to be talking about humility. Now, let's just start here because it's early in the morning. Humility comes from humus, not hummus. I mean, if you're hungry this morning, you're looking for some fruit and hummus. I'm not talking hummus. I'm talking humus. It's that rich, dark, organic soil that creates growth. When a seed is planted in fertile soil, it will come up under, around, through, and it'll transform into something far greater. You've probably heard this before. An acorn becomes the oak tree. And you'll hear me say often, if you want the harvest, you got to plant the seeds. If we plant the seeds, the harvest can't be prevented. And if I want to team up with someone, if I want someone on my team, if I'm hiring someone, the number one attribute is humility. It's the mother of all virtues. The father of all virtues, in my opinion, is forgiveness. That helps me move forward, not backwards. It helps me go from a hitching post to a guidepost. When you combine forgiveness and humility, there's really nothing that you can't do. You do become resilient. We have a quote at the beginning of this guidebook by Mother Teresa. It's the mother of all virtues. We have to talk about Mother Teresa to keep a lamp burning, we need to keep putting oil in it. Now, this word, it's really misunderstood. Some people, the way they've been raised, think that humility is humiliation. It's not downward glances. It's not being passive or submissive, slumping our shoulders, bowing our head, subservient downward glances. It's the opposite of that. It means I'm teachable, I'm coachable, I want to grow, I want to learn, I'm eager, I'm open. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Because when you're growing, everything grows around you. You want your finances to grow, you want your relationships to grow, you want your health, your wellness, whatever it is that you want to grow. I'll make you a promise. As you grow, everything around you will grow. And we talked about this last week, Norm, I think. Growth leads to happiness. Humility is literally growth. And when I'm growing, I'm happier. It doesn't lead to happiness. In fact, it is happiness. Think of some of the happiest people that you know. Those people are growing. There's no end game. They're continually learning. Norm, when you look at people in your network that you love to interact with, maybe the five people, you know, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Are those people people that grow? You look at the top people on your team. Are reliable. 
you know, so growth, personal growth is something that I definitely believe in, in that success principle that I kind of stumbled on about a year ago, is if you think about those who are lifelong learners, they're always winners. I've never, ever met a lifelong learner that wasn't a winner. And I challenge everybody on this call to kind of think that through, um, because that is the that is the number one success strategy that I know of, of living in this world, development and growth. Wow. So you just added something, because our second key, we're going to go to that. We're going to come back to the key. To, we just talked about the key to growth, that that is humility, that it comes from humus, that it leads to happiness. And then we have a second statement in your guidebook that earners are learners. You just said winners are learners. Readers are leaders. Somebody that is earning, they're growing. I just said, if you want your finances to grow, you want your relationships to grow, your health and wellness, you need to grow. And so we're honored that you would be with us for this eight-week series so that we can grow together. And when you're earning, you know it stops. It starts from learning. And when you're leading, I've never met a leader who wasn't a reader. One of the great leadership thought leaders of all time was a dear friend, personal mentor of mine. You'll hear him come through these webinars that we gathered together. It was Stephen R. Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He used to read or scan, he sped read, a book a day. Doug, you just heard that. Doug Belge, a book. A, he's, Doug's like, oh, no, he can see me. He's looking at me. Doug, it's good to have you this morning. But just think of that. A book a day. When I would go to Stephen's home up against the Wasatch Mountains, he lived up above Brigham Young University. There was a big Y on this beautiful mountain. There would be stacks of books in his home. There would be stacks when you entered. There would be stacks when you went into his office. There'd be stacks by the guest bathroom. They were like cairns. They were clues. There's a reason that he sold over 50 million books all over the world. There was a reason that he was one of the top thought leaders. Leaders are readers. At Franklin, when we started Franklin, and I was fortunate to be part of that, we profiled our top salespeople. We brought in a company from called Cambria Consulting from Boston, Massachusetts, paid them a lot of money. I can save you 50 grand by just sharing these two principles. If you have a business that you're leading, we said, why do our top salespeople and sales professionals, why are they making five, 10, 15 times more than the bottom core top? Why are they producing more? And it came down to two things. One, they were interpersonally astute. We're gonna talk about that a little bit and lay out some skills for that. That meant that they would walk somebody else's path. They would get into somebody's world, that they actually cared about other people. They weren't coming from a place, what can I get? They came from a place of what can I get? The second thing, and that blew us away, it was just two things. They read two books a month. Two books a month, one to two books a month, one nonfiction, one fiction, or two nonfiction books. Well, how could that equate to something um, that significant? Phyllis, I can see Phyllis this morning. Phyllis, it's good to see you this morning when we are growing. Greg, I saw you last week. It's good to see you this morning. I want that goatee you've got. I still can't really grow that facial hair like you have. That's a good luck. When we are committed to this growth, people will be attracted to you. And I just got to tell you, one of the top principles still to this day for becoming a master, it's the apprentice, journeyman, mastery experience. You're doing that as we're gathering together. I hope when we come together, I'm sharing 40 years of personal and professional development. I'm sharing people that I've learned from. Stephen would always say to me, Kevin, go to the top of the learning curve. And I've always wondered what that meant. Go to the top of the learning curve. If I want to be the best at something, if I want to master something, 
find somebody who's one of the very best. You can find that through a podcast, through a webinar like this, through a great book, through people that excel and have a passion for that. Go to them. Go to somebody at the top. Why go to somebody who's a one, two, or three on a scale of 10? Go to a 10 and learn from them. And that's what happened. Go back centuries. If you wanted to become a master in your village, you would become an apprentice. Apprentice, apprende means to learn. Apprende. Are you learning? Do you get it? Do you understand that? And they would learn from a master in their village. Then they would go on a journey. We're kind of going on a journey together and they would find someone else to teach them new principles. You can get on the internet, you can get on YouTube, Norm is reposting these on YouTube, putting words up because I'm putting so much out there. Maybe we're talking too fast and we put those in there. You never stop learning. A master doesn't become a master overnight. You have unique gifts and abilities. They're given to you for a reason. And when you open those gifts, you honor the giver of those gifts. Master those gifts. Malcolm Gladwell says it takes 10,000 hours to get that level of expertise. Mastery is lifelong. Humility is lifelong. It means I'm teachable, I'm coachable, I'm committed to learning, growing, stretching, expanding. I can have my shoulders back, my head up. That's humility. If somebody said, oh, you know, you're too proud, it, it, that is, that's arrogance. Humility, though, again, is not slumping my shoulders and hiding from my gifts. It's embracing my gifts and making the most of those gifts. So we never stop learning. By the way, when you take one idea, I've always said when we get together, if just one idea, one thought can have an impact in your life, then this was worth it. Because when your mind is introduced to a new idea and it gathers that idea and imprints it, your mind never goes back to the same dimensions. You're a different person. By the way, when you read a book, use a different colored pen. Um, at the end of this guidebook, if you want a signed copy of the spy, we'll figure out, I have about 50 I need to sign today and tomorrow in our great room. If you want one signed for you, we'll get one out. I'm not trying to sell a book or, or promote that, but if you want a copy of the spar, we'll get one that's signed and get it out to you just for the postage plus the book. But when you read a book, use a colored pen. First time you read it, write in blue. Second time you read it, write in black. Third time you read it, write in red. Fourth time you read it, write in green. Why? Because the person who read that book the first time is a totally different person who's reading it the third, fourth, fifth time. As a Man Thinketh is one of my favorite books. I'll recommend that to you. Because every thought that we think and every word that we speak, it creates a future. When I look through my As a Man Thinketh, I'll think, wow, what was I thinking that first time? I didn't put a date when I was reading it, when I started it. I would really recommend that you do that and that it's a continual thing. What's one or two books that you'd like to read in the month of May? Monday is my birthday. I'm going to be reading some old classics and I'm going to be reading some new books. You don't need to read or scan a book a day. Stephen had that ability to speed read and do that. But two books a month to take 15, 20 minutes. And one way that will help you do that I'm asking you between now and my birthday. Will you do this for me on my birthday? My birthday's May 4th. And I get all kinds of texts. People say, may the force be with you, right? <laughs> like I've never heard that one. May the force be with you, Star Wars. I love it. It's nice. But I'm going to do a media fast. I want positive thoughts in my mind. I'm going to take whatever that is, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. I don't consume a lot of media. And right now, when you get on and you're listening to the media, you're on TV, you're not getting anything new. It's regurgitating and you're, we're bringing a lot of fear that comes out. If there's things that you need to be updated on, of course do that. I'm not gonna get on and peruse or watch media between now and my birthday. You know what? I'm gonna be a lot happier. You know what? I have 15, 20 minutes 
to spend on me and not on what everybody else wants me to think. I'm going to ask you to try that. Try that from today for the next 48 hours, seven hours. If you really want to stretch with me, try it from today until my birthday and let me know. And if you do that, I'll sign a book for you. If you don't do that, I'll still sign a book for you. I'll do it either way. Norm, I think that's so important. And we're going to teach a principle before we go to the third thing, live life in crescendo. We're going to talk about communication because communication comes from dirt, common ground when you're communicating. The key to growth is getting grounded in this humus, in this growth. Norm, I saw you smile there a little bit. Love you, Norm. This is such an opportunity. The guidebook that we created, my team was working through the night. It was because of Norm. Norm said on a call that we had the other, just, just yesterday as we were looking through the guidebook, hey, it's great. It's more than I ever thought it would be. But are you open to an idea for improvement? Are you open to something new? And I said, Norm, on a scale of one to 10, if we can make this better for you and your team, it's an 11. Just tell us. We're not worried. We want it to be the best. And that's what I love about you, Norm. You always want to improve things. I just think it's in your DNA. You were born that way. What thoughts are coming into your mind as we talk about the second principle? Well, first of all, thank you for those kind words. But I was wondering if uh, maybe we could um, talk back and forth just a moment to drive home your point about reading. Uh, not very many of us have met authors before. And what I found with, when you're reading a book, you're really getting like concentrated thoughts, that person's best life work. I was wondering if you could share with, with, with our team and the audience, how much time did it take you to write Aspire? Um, and how much life experience went into that when you wrote that book? Thanks, Norm. Um, that was a life's work. Like this presentation today for you, um, been working my whole life on this. Aspire came out 10 years ago. We're celebrating this year the 10th year anniversary of Aspire. And it took four and a half years of my life to write Aspire. And at that point, three decades in human development. And you're all in human development. And so, yeah, when you read, when I'm reading Seven Habits. I'm reading John C. Maxwell's The 17 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. I'm reading James Allen, As a Man Thinketh, William Danforth's I Dare You, Odd Mandino's Greatest Salesman in the World, Greatest Secret in the World. That's their life's work, and they're giving you their best. So when you pour your heart, it's not that I was writing eight hours a day for four and a half years. Once I had a deadline norm, deadlines make things happen, and I had 800 C-level executives in the boardroom waiting at a hospitality conference. I mean, I went without sleep for a month to make sure those 800 books arrived on time and they arrived the night before it was that time. Because perfect's great, but done is better. Sometimes you gotta get it done. And when you're writing a book about words, sometimes you think every word's gotta be perfect. No, you gotta get it done. And so there was a point there. But yeah, you, you read something Normal. let's go back to you. It's, it, it's four and a half years. You're reading the very best that that person has put together on that topic. The best so, that they have to offer. That's why an audio book, you can do it in your car. By the way, when you get on and you're reading um, a book online with your Kindle or whatever you might use if you do that, when you go to highlight a book, you will see the most frequently highlighted section of that book. If you want to just scan like Stephen Covey did, you can just go in there, go to highlight. It'll say, these are the three, four, five most highlighted sections of my book. Mine is Genshai, what we talk, talked about last week is number one. Number two is what we're talking about right here. It's humility. People were intrigued at what that meant. So you can also see how others think when you read it. It's more interactive now. That answer that norm. It did, but I like to just recap. So it was the there's a whole lifelong of human development experience, and then four years of your time, your highest and best creative time to to physically write it. Fair. Fair. 
then think through, but so the, the reader gets all that benefit. And what would you say the average amount of time to read that book is? Well, it's a pretty quick book. I mean, I, there's 11 chapters. You can read a chapter in 10 to 15 minutes. So hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. So think about that for concentrated life experience and, and, and thoughts and thought provoking to uh, develop new tools in your toolbox. It, it's, it, it's, it's, like, it's like life on being supercharged. I love your thing about life being supercharged, filling your tank. This is the gas that you put in your tank. That's enormism. You, you, you're putting that, that fuel that's in the tank. But Norm, I'm going to tell everybody on this second session of igniting passion, don't read Aspire. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out. I don't want you to read Aspire. I don't want you to read Seven Habits. I don't want you to read As a Man Think of. Doug is like, oh, my goodness. He just said to read these. What's he telling me? <laughs> what I'm telling you is you don't read a book. You study a book. You dog ear it. You write all over it. Some people want that book to be just perfect. My kids want my books. These books behind me in our library, my office here, they are a record of my journey, what I was thinking, where I was. Don't read a book. Study a book. Does that make sense? I love it. I, and I've actually never heard it put that way, but that's the one, that's one I'm going to put in my toolbox. So thank you Great. for sharing. Great. So you can read Aspire. You can read other books. But as you're reading it, study it. Let's go to number three principle today, because when we get together, we're going to share three to four principles. And then we're going to have some tips at the end. This is one of the most powerful principles that you may hear during these entire eight weeks together. And it's a four word principle called live life in crescendo. Crescendo, C-R-E-S-C-E-N-D-L. And it's in, once you print this guidebook out, print in color, print in black and white, you'll see it right there. Live life in crescendo. That means that your greatest work is always ahead of you. Crescere, which is the origin in Latin for crescendo, means to grow. So when you live life growing, it means that your greatest work is ahead of you. And it means also that if you focus on contribution and not on achievement, you will achieve more than your wildest dreams. Achievement, success. We hear those words a lot. They're great words. That has a beginning and an end. I want to achieve something. I want to succeed in something. I'm going to start here and I'm going to end here. Contribution is what I'm going to give. It's ongoing. It's enduring. We have at the end of this guidebook, Seven Affirmations. That's my newest book. We're, we hope to have that printed, ready, edited by late summer today. And your opportunity to contribute to someone. When I know when someone's coming to me, and that's how I feel with you, Norm. That's how I feel with Jeff Tobar. There are many of his teams on here. You get it. You get it because you add value. I almost can't get ahead when you have someone in your life who is committed to growth. You can't outdo them. You're trying to do something for them, but then they're doing something for you. It's like the law of reciprocity. Do something for somebody else without expecting anything in return. Why do people that grow live the law of reciprocity? Because they have so much to give. You can't give what you don't have. You can't pour out of a bucket what it doesn't have. If you grow, everything grows. You want your marriage to grow. You want your relationships to grow. You want your health and nutrition and wellness to grow. We need to grow to create a foundation for that to grow around you. It was Stephen Covey. It was his motto to live life in crescendo. His family, they made up those little bands. And I said, one, one day visiting with him, tell me what that means. And he just stopped. And he said, oh my goodness, let me teach you this principle. You focus on contribution. You'll achieve more than your wildest dreams. But contribution, it's, it, it's enduring. It's non-ending. It's ongoing. And just make that shift. Do I want to contribute? 
or do I want to succeed? And it comes from a place. It's like when you walk into a room, people that are growing, some people walk into a room and they say, here I am, because they want everybody to see them. And that's sometimes a reflection. People are maybe a little too much out there. I don't know what that is for someone, but where it's always got to be focused on them, sometimes it's the opposite. Maybe they don't feel so good about themselves, so they've got to draw attention. But when someone comes in who's coming from a place of growth and contribution, instead of saying, here I am, they walk into a room and they say, there you are. There you are, Andrew Williams. There you are, Doug. BG, did I put an L in that last time, Doug? I did B-E-I-G-I-E. -I -I -E. It's my eyesight this early in the morning. There you are, Carrie Weber. NJ for Norm. Dietrich right there. He's all masked up. He's ready to go. Kylie. There is Kylie. So when I walk in, Paul, Keith Johns, Tammy Quick. Tammy Quick, that is like a movie star name. Celeste Spencer, Josh Barr. Bivik, I love that name. I want to hear, text Norm what your name is. Because well, I know the name from the East, you know what it means, don't you, Norm? Well, I, know, I don't know what it means. It's, the pronunciation is Vivek Balachami. Different. Bivik, I love that name. It sounds like victory. It sounds like Invictus. I am the captain of my ship. I'm the master of my destiny. So when you walk into a room and you're coming from a place of growth because you poured into yourself so you can now pour into others, you don't walk in and say, here I am, look at me. You walk in and say, there you are. And you know people like that. They're happy. They contribute. You can't wait for the phone to ring. It's the phone test. When the phone rings, you either run to it or you run away from it. People that grow, you'll run to it. People that kind of pull your energy away, when that phone rings, you can ignore it or you run away from it. You know it. You know those people in your life. And we'll look at, I love it when I get a chance to see you. We're going to come back to some of you in just a minute. I wish I could hear from every one of you. If I could just stop and have the several dozen people that are on this call and just listen to you, I'm going to have a chance to learn. If I'm only hearing from myself, I'm not going to learn. That was what also was so amazing. When you're, when you're with the John Maxwell, when I was with the Stephen Covey, I said, now, what, what does that word mean? Tell me what that means again. He was so curious, so engaged, so open. That's going to leave us to our fourth concept. Any other thoughts on that, Norm? Anything anybody's texted you? If you have a thought that you want to share anytime during this experience, you can text Norm. We can also put it in the chat so that we can see it. Um, any other thoughts, Norm, before we bring it home with the fourth, um, fourth concept? Or maybe I'll just go to the fourth concept. L let me go to that, Norm, and then we'll get ready and come back to you for these okay. tips. The fourth concept is beginner's mind. Sometimes in the West, we see somebody, oh, they're a black belt. That means they're advanced, they're the best in the world. Do you know in the East, a black belt is a serious beginner. Now just think of that. I have a black belt, I don't, but if I had a black belt, I'm wearing a brown belt, but a black belt means they're a serious beginner. And they have a character that describes a word. The word is show shin, S. H-O-S-H-I-N. It's an ancient word in Eastern culture. And when you look at the character, the character shows this openness. It's open, it's not closed. It shows this eagerness, this curiosity. In a beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. That's why I love to be around somebody that's growing because they see multiple ways to solve a problem. Sometimes in that expert mind who thinks that they're there, they've arrived, there's nothing else to learn, there are few possibilities. So when you hear someone say, and I referenced a little bit last week, but I want to put an explanation point. Have you read this book? Have you seen this movie? Have you heard of this principle? And sometimes we feel like we've got to know everything, be the source of all knowledge, and we chase this new opportunity to grow away. 
yeah, I've heard that or I know about that because we don't want to look silly. But if you just stop and say, no, I haven't heard about that or I've learned a little, but please tell me more. You are practicing Shoshin. You're coming from a beginner's mind. What can I learn? The greats, the great leaders, the great contributors, those that live life in crescendo, people that are happy. Like, tell me about that. I'd like to learn more. It could be something about cooking. It could be about your relationships. It can be about raising children. It can be about communicating. So I'm going to share a principle and see if you will practice Shoshin here. Because we're about that 30-minute point where I turn it back to Norm. I'll turn it back to you, Norm, for a couple of minutes, and then I'll wrap it up at the very end. Communication means common ground. So here's a question. Who's responsible for communication? The sender or the receiver? If you say it's the sender, put your right hand up. I can see some of you. If you say it's the receiver, put your left hand up. How many of you say it's the sender? No, oh, I can't trick this group. Doug, you touched your eyes. You touched your glasses, so that might be. Your left hand, how many of you say it's the receiver? How many of you say it's both? There you go. This is an enlightened group. It's both. The sender or the receiver, it's got to be both. And I share a story in the Caribbean about a restaurant owner. You know, when that sugar that's put out for your coffee and your tea, when it's put in an open container, it would turn soapy and sloppy and look like mashed potatoes after a while. And so he bought all of these small containers of sugar. You've seen them. You can walk into a coffee shop, open it up, put it in. Pure cane sugar. And he quickly gathered everybody together, said, I've got to go in. I'm meeting somebody in town. But will you take all of the sugar out of the bowls, clean them, sterilize them, make them ready to go, and put this new sugar in? I'll be back in about three hours. We'll be ready to open for lunch. What do you think everybody did at the restaurant? Doug is smiling because he gets it. They sat there for the next two to three hours, and they opened these little packets of sugar. And they're saying, man, that, that, I'm not a very bright boss, but he said to take it out of here, put it in there, and pour it in. Instead of saying, do you understand what I'm saying? Or showing. See, to tell is to show, but when you really want to teach, to teach is to show, not to tell. To te you know, We call it show and tell. When I teach something, I'm showing. It's one thing to tell somebody, let me show exactly what that looks like. Pour it in, here it is. And everything started to open up. When he came back, he had a big surprise because he needed to order new sugar packs. Because that sugar was going to turn soapy and soppy and mashed potato-ish pretty quick. So you make sure the communication is clear. And it's not always, are you clear with what I say? You get feedback, you show it, you have somebody demonstrate back what you just described. And again, Norm, that's what I love with you. You're very clear communicator. I don't know where you learned that skill. When you and I are communicating, getting ready for this, you're making sure I understand what everybody needs for these experiences. And it helps me deliver. And I'm excited. I'm excited to get up early to get here and do this. So back to you, Norm. We're going to pin you for a sec so that we can hear you as you bring us home. Kevin, thank you again for uh, sharing your, your journey with uh, humility and these uh, philosophies and, and, and virtues. When you talk about the feedback, it's, it's everybody on here. Everyone's uh, not, people have reached out and said, hey, what about this? What about this? So it's a culmination of everybody on this call that those ideas came from. You know and what, Norm? I can hear you, but for some reason, can you hear him? You can hear, you keep going, but I don't know if they can see you. Can you see him? Okay, okay. they can see you. So okay. on. you keep going, Norm. I'm so we sorry. I couldn't see it on mine, and I did not want, we just talked about communication. <laughs> I didn't want people to not to I appreciate that. Don't, don't so we're rock and roll, brother. Keep going. And we, and we work through these uh, new tools, uh, Zoom and go to my meeting. That they all they all have their place, 
but there's, there's, uh, we're all adjusting as, as uh, we go through this <laughs> social distancing. But I want to share with you um, some, some tools that um, fit with what we're talking about and also fit with the, this time of this week. First is, is a, uh, a concept that we've mastered well at, at Reliable. We call it the MSP. And it's a, it's a philosophy, it's a, it's a success strategy of beginning gratitude. And I had an executive coach teach it to me. Her name is Giselle Chapman. But it goes like this. When you wake up in the morning, you think, what am I specifically grateful for? And there's two different ways you can do it. You can do it living in this world of just uh, with no spiritual aspect, or you can add a spiritual aspect. What am I specifically grateful to God for? But in, in the, the way it works, I'll give you, I'll show with what my MSP is today. So my MSP is I'm grateful that we started on a journey called EOS, which is what's called entrepreneurial operating system. Approximately 1.5% of small and medium sized businesses run on this system. And it's incredibly powerful. It's incredibly simplistic. But it's in, there's an incredible amount of work, but the, we embarked on the journey, which, which never ends yesterday. And we had a successful start. And man, we walked away with a list of uh, areas that we can improve. But that's something that I'm absolutely specifically grateful for today. And the way it shows up in my work life is this. My first phone, my first video call this morning was with our shop personnel. And before we start a meeting, we go around the room talking about what, am I, what is my MSP. And mm -hmm. MSP stands for My Smile Production. Or the, the philosophy is beginning gratitude. So before we start talking about business, before we talk about anything else, we go around and share what the MSP is. And what I found is, is multiple fold. Number one, there's a deeper human connection because we're understanding what's important and what's going on in that person's head. And you're able to respond in a caring way. Number two, it fires off endorphins in your head that allow you to be able to learn and retain more. When you start off in gratitude, it, it, it's, it, it creates a, a chemical in your brain that changes your ability to learn versus if you start off in criticism. Most people in criticism clam up. Guess what? The brain clams up too. They only hear that one thing that, that upset them. This has the absolute reciprocal effect, and we've had great success with it. We do it not only in the shop, but we also do it in the office. And I got to say, in my personal life, I could use some improvement, but it really works in, in, in personal life as well. So that's My Smile Production, and that came from Giselle Chapman. My next one, this came from my friend Jeff Tovar, and we're sitting there talking, you know, and talking about how to cope with all this change, cope with the loss of, of being with people. And we said, hey, what are the top, you know, this isn't all bad. What are the top five things that have come out of this? And we actually started writing a list. And like, well, wait a minute, we can get to a top 10. So. I'd encourage you guys, encourage everybody on this call tonight at, at dinner to talk with family and say, what are the top five things that have come out of coronavirus? A lot of things where I'm hearing people say is life has slowed down. I've got a chance to, to, to connect with my family members on a deeper level. I've got a chance to, to get off the rat race of, of being so busy. And it, I found that it um, is a great tool to provide an uplift as we're going through these times. So I wanted to share that with you. Another one I could share with you that is going on here at Reliable and, and also just going with me personally. I, as I realized, we're, us cre creatures, we need each other and we want to be by each other. We're designed to be in tribes. This social distancing is tough. I've got a few pictures showed, like shot of me and say, hey Norm, that's not six feet. And I, I pulled up on some team members like, ooh, that isn't six feet. One of the things that you may want to do is remind your family members um, when, before they leave in the morning or just a kind reminder before the day starts of that six feet. It is easy to forget. And just as we are as people, a lot of us want to, to group closer together. And we need a little kind reminder helps move, move the needle. Next one in the state of Ohio, uh, Governor DeWine has uh, now strongly urged us to wear masks. And we're, we're working through that now as a company. And we have one of our team members that has donated some masks. And she makes these, um, they're, they're beautiful and they're, they're boutique. And I, I, and I might be talking out of turn, but uh, here's a, uh, does them also in, in specific colors. 
So we're going to be putting a Facebook post. If you need a few masks, she hand makes them and they, they look beautiful and it might, it's a great resource. We're also going to put another post up for um, if you need larger volumes of masks. We found a, uh, a vendor out west that has a commercially uh, produced mask with two layers. And then if, if it need be, or if you desire even a, a, a stronger sense of protection, they have a filter that you can place in between the two. So we, we have those coming and they appear to be um, of, of good value. And I love that idea that you can actually add that additional filter if you so desire. So we'll put uh, some, some additional information about that. Um, Henry Rocha uh, typed in and said, hey, one of the things that they're doing in their family is to learn something new and making that a challenge. And that's been a, a boost in their family where they've gotten an uplift in getting through this. Like, hey, we got this extra time, let's put it to good use. And as, as Kevin talked about, you got an author like Kevin who's got his whole life experience plus four years of writing a book and you get to receive all that information in a few hours. So big one on that. Um, Ashley uh, was one of our team members. She's a day di dispatcher and receptionist. And she came up with one that's pretty simple. She says, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with adjusting to being a, a stay at home or being at home mom and now teacher and tutor. And she's like, wow, it's pretty tough. The next day her face just looked better. I'm like, what's going on Ashley? She goes, we came up with a schedule. I'm like, well, tell me a little more about that. And so she has specific times that she works with each each child, and they've they've created a huge uplift with that. Just having just a simple schedule that each person gets individualized attention one on one. Uh, next thing we're, that we're going to Doug uh, shared a resource this week with putting up acrylic. Um, they're temporary acrylic dividers, like that you would put like between a receptionist and a visitor. Or like, for example, at, at Snowfighter University, we have computers set by each other. We're gonna put these, these temporary uh, acrylic uh, barriers in between. On a, on a, hopefully it's a temporary basis, but they could, they could also be transformed to be permanent as well. And then the last tip, I actually learned this yesterday in EOS, and uh, Gina Wickman called it a focus break. And it's where you take an hour of undivided attention Turn off all electronics and focus on one specific subject. If you're, you're focused, for example, on a, a sales plan, or you're focused on reading a book, or you're focused to take this, this, the four sources of abundance and figuring out how you can apply that to your life, but to take one hour of undivided attention to one specific topic creates a huge uplift. And when I heard about it, it made a great deal of sense and I'm looking forward to trying that one myself. So those are this week's tools and looking forward to sharing with you a whole group for next week. Oh my goodness, Norm, we said we would keep, we would keep this to 45 minutes, we're at 44, I'm just gonna add 30 seconds. We took notes here, but those were incredible. And you know, NJ, Norm Jr. is, is kind of showing the mask so we can see that. Uh, there, he's modeling that like he's on a runway. Maybe next week you can send me one of your masks. I could do that. There we are. So that we're set. But it is important to be safe and sound. I want you to just make a switch too. We're we're gonna. You can hear me. Can you see me? Okay. Um, yes, they can see me. So we're good. You have the opportunity to say, "Am I stuck at home? Am I surviving at home?" or am I safe and sound at home and I thrive at home? It's how we shift that. Norm just talked about gratitude. Gratitude comes from grace. Grace means divine gift. So when you express gratitude, you're expressing gratitude for your divine gifts. Next week, our focus is on namaste, saluting the divine within. We're gonna talk more about that one week from today, same time, same station. I have just two assignments for you. I'm gonna ask you to get your guidebook out, fill in your notes so that you're ready. There are visualizations in this guidebook right in the middle of the stream of abundance. When you go to bed tonight, I'm asking you one, consume less media. 
and set aside 1% of your day for personal growth. There's 1,440 minutes. Take 15 minutes today. Norm just talked about an hour focus. Take 15 minutes and just grow where you want to grow. You get to choose and just have that focus time. Norm talked about an hour at 45 minutes. But if you did 15 minutes every day for the rest of your life, that 1% will give you so much for the rest of the 99%. How you end your day is how you start your day. How you start your day is how you end your day. I would ask you, as we talked about abundance last week, to visualize a stream of abundance that flows to you and through you to others. Get away from the media. Get away from the fear mongering. Get away. There's real stuff happening. But focus as you go to bed. Whatever your routine is, between now and next Wednesday, visualize, and there are beautiful pictures in this guidebook for you to do that. Find your favorite stream. You're not looking at yourself in the stream. You're in the stream. When I work with an Olympic athlete, they are in that discipline working on it visually. And they pre-do it before they ever stand and get a medal. And growth is generally the difference between no medal and a medal. Visualize a stream of abundance that flows to you and through you to others. I was talking to a single mom the other day that helped us with our social media. Seven years ago, I taught her that. I said, how long have you been doing this? She said, I've been doing it for seven years. And now abundance is just flowing into her. She's got the home that she wanted. She had a failed business before all kinds of things opened. She also said she took her worries and just placed them in that river or that stream of water to just flow away. And then she looked upstream at the opportunities, the blessings, what Norm talked about, what she could be grateful for, those flow to her. Because this is about contribution and not success. It doesn't stop with you. It flows to you and through you to others. Take two or three minutes tonight, tomorrow night, every night between now and we get back together. You will come as you start your day from a better place because your mind will work at night, your subconscious on matching those opportunities, that abundance, sending the worries, sending the concern away. It works. So try that for the next week. That would be my biggest key during this environment for you. And I wanna thank you. What a privilege to be on this call with each of you. If you need anything, let us know. Norm, you're the best. Everybody on this call, thank you again. Have a great rest of your day.